Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, my name is Meredith McDill. I'm an assistant director of admission at Smith College. Happy to be here to give you an overview of Smith. Uh, but of course, first and foremost, I'd like to say that uh, we certainly hope you and your family and friends are all staying healthy and doing well in these challenging, unprecedented times. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I'm an international admission officer at Smith, and as such, I do a lot of talking about Smith all around the world and a lot of cultures where there's not a lot of familiarity with either liberal arts colleges or women's colleges. So I always like to start with a little bit of Smith's history, because when we were founded in the late 1800s, that was a time when in the U.S. colleges and universities weren't admitting women. They were only admitting men. So our founder never set out to create anything like a convent or a seminary or what was known in those days as a finishing school for young girls to teach them to be proper wives and mothers. No. What our founder set out to do was really to provide a higher education opportunity for women equal to what the Ivy League institutions like Harvard and Yale and the rest were offering only to men at the time. So today, Smith has grown into the largest women's college in the U.S., and we're an excellent liberal arts college where the focus really is on making the most of who you are and what you want to become. In terms of our location, we are in the western part of the state of Massachusetts in a town called Northampton. You see the red box around it there. Uh, we're under two hours from Boston, and we're about three hours from New York City. The closest airport to us uh, is Bradley International Airport with an airport code of BDL, and that's only about a 45 minute drive from campus. So as the largest women's college, we've got 2,750 students, 14% of whom are citizens of countries outside the U.S., and of our U.S. students, about a third identify as U.S. students of color. So I'd like to speak with you today. Uh, I give you an overview about academics at Smith, about uh, housing and student life, and finally, uh, a bit about the application and financial aid processes. And of course, I'll be weaving in um, some information about athletics at Smith too, when we talk about uh, housing and student life. So I know many of you are probably looking at a lot of different types of institutions of higher education, not only, of course, in the U.S., but all over the world. Uh, but here in the U.S., there are over 4,000 four-year institutions of higher education. And out of all of those, only a handful, like Smith, offer what's called the open curriculum, which is essentially the most flexible course of study you could have available to you at any U.S. college or university, because Outside of the 10 to 14 courses on average that you have to take to fulfill the requirements of your major, the remainder of your 32 classes, um, and you're going to take a minimum of 32 classes over four years at Smith, can be in absolutely any area of interest to you because unlike some other colleges that have a core curriculum or what are sometimes called general education or area or distribution requirements. Um, schools like Smith that offer the open curriculum, and by the way, some other schools you would have heard of that also have it include Brown University and Amherst College, which is in our own uh, consortium, which I'll talk about in a moment. But schools like ours have essentially removed that structure uh, so that you're free to pursue your intellectual passions and be supported on your own terms. So it makes it very possible and a high percentage of our students do double major. Uh, we have engineering majors, for example, who might have a double major in dance. We have neuroscience majors who might have a double major in art or music or environmental science and policy. There really are an endless number of combinations uh, for you to combine both your left brain and your right brain interests, maybe in terms of either a double major or a major and minor. Um, or other ways to structure your studies within our open curriculum, including concentrations and certificates. And it really makes for a great dynamic in our classrooms because all of the students in your classes with you are there because they're truly interested in that subject and not because they're going through and ticking off these various uh, subject and area requirements where we, um, I'm sorry, distribution or area requirements where we to require them. 
It doesn't mean, however, that when you arrive on campus, especially if you're undecided about a major, that we're simply going to thrust our course catalog at you and ask you to go through and willy-nilly choose some classes to take. You're going to have a very uh, comprehensive, what we call liberal arts advising. So if you do come in undecided and it's absolutely okay, your faculty advisor, your pre-major advisor will sit with you, talk about your areas of academic interest, have you meet with both faculty teaching in those disciplines and students majoring in those areas so that by the time you do have to declare a major, which isn't until towards the end of your second year at Smith, it's a very well-informed um, and educated decision, something you feel sure about. Uh, we're a small residential liberal arts college, so this translates to small classes. The average class size at Smith is only 19 students, but 70% um, of our classes have 17 or fewer students in them. Um, and those large lectures, uh, lecture format classes, which at Smith might mean 45 to 100 students in an auditorium with your professor standing in, for, in front of you and uh, talking at you, those only represent less than 1% of all the classes at Smith. The vast majority of our classes are discussion-based, where you might be seated around a conference table with your professor and the other 16 or so students in your class. Um, and coming to class, uh, having done the reading, um, ready to engage in the vibrant discussions that will happen in your classes, not only with your professor, but with the other students there with you. I know, again, you're probably looking at a lot of different kinds of institutions from large public, uh, maybe research universities on one end of the spectrum to small residential liberal arts colleges like Smith. Um, so I want to put a plug in uh, here for the liberal arts experience because it gives students this great advantage to do collaborative one-on-one -on -one research with faculty. Unlike at the larger universities where often those research opportunities might go to students who are pursuing a master's degree or a PhD graduate students, as we call them, at a liberal arts institution like Smith, the research opportunities are there for you in your first four years after you graduate from high school when you're earning your bachelor's degree and you are what we call an undergraduate. Um, so think about that. Think about the opportunity to uh, co-author journal articles with faculty based on the research you're doing together or co-present with faculty at professional conferences based on the research you're doing. And think about how great that will look on your resume or CV if after earning your bachelor's degree, you can say I'm published in a professional journal. It really is a huge advantage to students who choose the liberal arts experience and, you know, I want to also underscore that the research happens across all disciplines. A lot of people thinking that it's all, might think that it's all lab based, that it's all in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering or math. And that's absolutely untrue. Um, research happens in the humanities and the arts, um, in the social sciences as well. And at Smith, about 80% of our students will take advantage of the opportunity to do collaborative one-on-one -on -one research with faculty uh, sometime during their Smith experience. Smith is the largest women's college in the country and we're part of the largest and most widely utilized uh, college consortium here, where you have Smith with Amherst, Mount Holyoke and Hampshire colleges and the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. All five of our schools are within about a 20 kilometer or 12 mile radius of one another. And we're all connected by the largest free bus system in the country. So students at any of our five schools can choose to take up to half of all of their classes on one of the other campuses. You can also do things like join clubs and organizations, go to concerts, lectures, sports events, and parties on the other campuses. So this gives you access to about 7,000 different classes. Um, and there's so much intermingling among students, uh, the 30,000 students within the five college consortium. Smith happens to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest importer within the consortium, having the most students, both young men and young women, by the way, um, come from the other schools to either take classes or engage in other activities on the Smith campus. 
Uh, so you absolutely can't think of Smith and can't think of a women's college as a place where you're going to somehow be cloistered away with all women all the time. Um, when I host students who and families and counselors who come and visit Smith for the first time, knowing it's the largest of the women's colleges, they're often very surprised by all the gender diversity they see here, partly because of our membership in the five college consortium. So it's a, a really vibrant, larger community that you would be a part of if you choose to come to Smith. In terms of co-curricular opportunities, uh, we were one of the first colleges in the US to offer uh, study abroad opportunities. Um, we had some of the first study abroad programs out there, uh, sending college students to study uh, outside of the United States. And our four original year-long fully Smith faculty-led programs still exist today in Paris, Hamburg, Germany, Geneva, Switzerland, and Florence, Italy. Um, but outside those uh, four fully Smith faculty-led programs, which by the way, have students from other institutions like Yale or Dartmouth or Duke, uh, both young men and young women on them, you have access to about a hundred different options to study outside the US, either for an academic semester or a full year. We're particularly well known for the percentage of our students who study outside the US in a typical year, unlike COVID times, um, for a full year as opposed to an academic semester or a shorter period of time. And some of our students will actually combine two different programs in two different regions of the world back to back for a full year. Uh, and every year our students go to about 42 different countries and about half of our students will study outside the U.S. Um, at some point during their Smith career. We believe that we were the first institution to offer our own um, uh, guaranteed internship program to give every one of our students access to get professional experience in their fields. You know, Smith is an academically rigorous kind of place. So during the academic year, you're really going to need to be focused on your studies. So, you know, when do these professional internships tend to take place? During the summer, when you're not living on campus, when you're not being supported by any financial aid that you may have. Um, and it still is the case that often your first professional internship will be unpaid. So how are you supposed to be able to support yourself? Well, at Smith, we have what we call our Praxis Internship Program, whereby any student who does a professional internship in the US will receive a $3,000 stipend. Um, and it's, more and more of our students though are choosing to do these internships outside the US. If you choose to do that, the stipend increases to $4,000 um, you know, to help uh, cover your airfare to get to that international location. And we have a really great career development office at Smith. It's called our Lazarus Center for Career Development. It's named after a Smith graduate who went on to become one of the first woman CEOs of a Fortune 500 company. Shelly Lazarus um, went on after she graduated from Smith as a history major, by the way, to become the CEO of Ogilvy and Mather, you know, um, one of the world's largest uh, public relations and advertising firms. Um, so the Lazarus Center helps connect students both to the internship opportunities and helps them prepare to go on to graduate school, to prepare for the um, MCAT if you're going to medical school. Um, uh, and it also brings employers to campus to help students uh, find their first job after they graduate from Smith. So in terms of postgraduate outcomes, um, within uh, five years of graduating, about 69% of our students will have gone on to medical school or to law school or to earn a, a, a master's of business administration or an MBA or a PhD. And you see here the top five graduate institutions our students tend to attend. Um, and for our students who instead are going directly into the workforce after they leave Smith, um, for them, uh, about 91% are employed uh, within two years of graduating. But if you roll um, it out 10 years from graduating, um, about 75% of our students have gone on uh, to graduate school. And uh, we have an excellent alum network, uh, 48,000 growing in over 120 countries who are very committed to launching and sustaining our graduates and global careers. 
Um, every year we bring about 175 different companies to campus to recruit Smith graduates. Uh, we often combine those services with uh, the other schools within the five college consortium. So the added incentive for all of these companies is that they're not only coming to interview uh, Smith uh, seniors, but also graduating seniors from the other schools within our consortium. And I think it's a remarkable statistic, that last point, that 20 years after graduating, some 20% of our alums report uh, holding chief executive or executive level positions. I want to say a few words next about why you might want to consider a women's college. Well, the studies show that as a student at a women's college, you're about three times more likely to major in economics, and that happens to be the large, the most popular major um, for international students at Smith. You're one and a half times more likely to major in the sciences, and currently at Smith, because we are the only women's college that has our own fully accredited engineering program, about 40% of our students are majoring in STEM. Um, and you're twice as likely to go to medical school or to earn a PhD than you would be as a, a female student at a co-ed institution. Um, I mentioned our strength in the STEM fields, but art is our largest department uh, on campus. And as an art major, you can major either in studio art or art history or architecture. Um, I mentioned economics is our most popular major for uh, international students. We're an excellent liberal arts college with a thousand courses in over 50 different areas of study, about uh, 40 different majors and about 50 different minors. But I always do highlight our strength in STEM because I think it speaks so well to what Smith's mission has always been, which essentially is to propel women into leadership roles, particularly in fields like STEM that have traditionally been male dominated. Um, you know, there's another statistic out there that says at a co-ed institution about 85% of the time, the president of the Student Government Association is a young man. And that may be even though demographically 60% of the students at that co-ed institution are women. So why should that be? Is it because the guys tend to seek out leadership opportunities more or are they somehow more sought after for them? That's not the case at Smith. You are going to be equipped with the tools to become a strong leader if you come to Smith. You're going to observe strong women leaders in action among our faculty, over 60% of whom are women, and that's really unusual for an institution of higher ed in the States. Um, our senior administrators, the majority of whom are women, but the presidents of our clubs and organizations, the uh, student leaders in our entirely student-governed housing system. It's a place where you're going to both observe strong leaders in action and be able to take on leadership roles for yourselves. So think about a women's college, think about Smith as a place where you're going to continue to develop your voice, hone your voice, and learn how to go out and use your voice as an agent of change in your community. You know, our uh, mascot at Smith, uh, we're the Smith Pioneers, which we think is apt because of all of the things our graduates have gone on to be the first woman to do. They include the first ever female physician in Kenya, the first woman director of the office of the UN High Commission. Some of our famous alums you see pictured here, one of the first famous women chefs, um, Julia Child, um, Gloria Steinem, Betty Friedan, who were leaders in the women's movement at Smith and uh, the other alums you see pictured here. Um, you're going to be joining a community of first. You're going to have access to one of the most powerful women's networks in the world. These 48,000 alums uh, who I mentioned are very anxious to uh, help Smith graduates find jobs, to hire Smith students in internship positions. But this network is going to be incredibly valuable to you throughout your lifetime. You know, you may find yourself relocating to a place like London. Um, London, England, <laughs> London in the UK, <laughs> um, for you know a job, for example, someplace you've never been before where you know no one, and you could find yourself instantly surrounded by 100 new friends in terms of the very large, very active Smith Alumni Club located uh, in London. Um, so this is uh, something that women's colleges are famous for. Smith is no exception. Um, and it's something, it's a network you're going to be able to tap into again, both on a personal level and a professional level throughout your lifetime. 
We have a really unique living and dining situation at Smith. It's really unlike any other institution I know of here in the U.S. Uh, we are a residential liberal arts college. We require you to live on campus all four years, which means obviously we guarantee housing all four years. But rather than traditional dormitories, our students live in 37 different houses spread out around campus. They vary from one another, both in terms of size and in terms of architectural style. The smallest house only has 10 students living in it and the largest has about 100. Um, and the houses really create a smaller community within the, the larger Smith community. Our students really feel like they're living with a family in their houses. It gives them a home away from home. And students um, really become fiercely loyal to their houses. You can either stay in the same house all four years or you can move around among the houses. But every single student thinks that her house is the absolute best house on campus and there's a friendly rivalry among the houses. I always say if you were to observe two Smith graduates meeting in the street for the first time, I'll bet you their first question to one another wouldn't be, oh, what year did you graduate? It would be, what house did you live in? Um, and all of the houses have some very long, very dearly beloved uh, traditions that they celebrate as well. We're also very well known for our food at Smith, not only because Julia Child is a Smith graduate, um, but uh, we have uh, 15 different dining halls around campus. Um, 14 of the houses have dining halls in them, which makes it very convenient because you can just traipse downstairs in your pajamas and slippers and grab your breakfast if your house has a dining hall. Um, but it's a one size fits all, our 15th dining hall, I should say, is in our campus or student center. Um, it's a one size fits all meal program. So you simply swipe your student identification card to access any of the 15 dining halls. We offer about 10 different menu options during any one meal period. We post them all online. We obviously offer kosher, halal, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free options. One of the houses focuses, uh, for example, on Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean cuisine. Another focuses on Asian cuisine lots of options and we post them all online so that students can and uh, a lot of them do choose to have what I call a progressive or movable feast where they might meet up with one group of students because they like what the dining hall is serving for a starter and go somewhere else because they like what's being served at a main course, meet up with another group of friends at another one of the dining halls for dessert. And they're always challenging one another to see who can manage to make it to the most dining halls in one hour, 45 minute meal period. Um, when I was giving this talk one year in Paraguay in South America, I had a Smith graduate in my audience who stopped me in the middle of my talk when I said that and said, Meredith, that's not a challenge. It's a rite of passage. You have to make it to all 15 dining halls in one meal period before you graduate. And she had managed to go to everyone and have dessert in every one of the dining halls. So while it is something you could accomplish while you're at Smith, it's not something we recommend from a health perspective. Uh, we have over 130 different clubs, student clubs and organizations at Smith. And remember I said that you can join clubs and organizations at any of the other schools within the five college consortium as well. We have 11 different um, Division Three varsity sports teams at Smith, which makes us one of the larger sports programs for women in the country. I'm going to speak a little bit more about that next. Um, there's always something going on both at Smith and within the five colleges. Uh, our town, the town of Northampton, is a, a town of only about 28,000 residents, which might sound really small to many of you, but you have to understand that during the academic year, the population of Northampton essentially doubles because of the 30,000 students within the five college consortium. And it's really the lively hub, the largest downtown within the five college consortium. So those 30,000 students aren't just coming to our campus to participate in activities, take classes, et cetera, but they're also congregating in our town, um, which is a short, safe walking distance from our campus. I describe Northampton as a very globally aware, very environmentally conscious kind of place. Um, there are lots of great biking and hiking trails, lots of great opportunities for outdoor recreation, but for a town of that size, I think it speaks volume that volumes that there are maybe 72 different uh, restaurants in Northampton. There are also great 
uh, art galleries and boutiques and shops. I think there's something like 200 different flavors of ice cream in Northampton. Um, so it's a it's a very lively kind of place where you're always going to find something uh, to do. And uh, Smith, the college, has a great what we call town and gown relationship with Northampton. Our students are getting involved in uh, service opportunities, community service opportunities in the town. Um, so it's a, it's a great place to be. It's uh, often voted the number one small town in America, uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. So I mentioned a little bit about athletics and I want to say a few more words. As I mentioned, uh, Smith participates in Division Three athletics. So we're not in the division uh, whose games you're likely to see on ESPN or on the major networks, nor do we award athletic scholarships. I'm going to talk about financial aid in a moment, but our financial aid is primarily need-based. Uh, it's based on your family's financial circumstances, and we um, meet 100% of your family's demonstrated financial need. Um, so not scho uh, athletic scholarships, but at Division three schools like Smith, you're really a scholar athlete. Um, your academics come first. That means that you'll have a lot of flexibility. You know, your coaches are certainly going to understand that your first focus needs to be on your academics. In Division Three athletics, athletes typically don't travel uh, as far for their sports competitions, so you're out of the classroom less in general. Uh, and your professors will also understand your commitment to your sport if you do have to miss class. But it doesn't mean that our sports aren't highly competitive. And by way of example, I wanted to highlight Smith's basketball team and a recent Canadian star basketball player for Smith. On the left, uh, of this slide, you'll see Lauren Bondi, a 2019 Smith graduate who was the captain of our varsity basketball team and played guard. Um, she's from Burnaby, British Columbia, and she graduated from Notre Dame secondary there. Uh, Lauren was named one of only 30 women athletes from the entire country as an NCAA Woman of the Year nominee. She was also named a first team academic All-American on the 2018-2019 Google Cloud Academic All-America teams as selected by the uh, College Sports Information Directors of America or COSIDA. She was the first player in Smith basketball program history to be named an Academic All-American. She graduated with about a 3.9 GPA as a neuroscience major and an exercise and sports uh, sciences minor. Um, and she led our conference, which is the New England Women and Men's Athletic Conference or NUMAC in points scored, 538, points per game, 18.6, three-point percentage, 42.4, and free throw percentage, 84.5, earning a New Mac Athlete of the Year honors as a two-time first-team All-New Mac pick. Lauren was a, a research intern with the Faculty of Medicine at the University of British Columbia, where I believe she's now uh, currently in medical school. During her time at Smith, our basketball team was the regular season conference champion, and they went to the NCAA tournament, making, uh, making it to the second round. Last year, um, after Lauren had graduated, Smith also had a really successful year. Our basketball team won the New Mac championship for the first time in program history, made it to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Division III tournament for the first time, and was ranked number 24 in the final poll before the tournament unfortunately had to be canceled due to COVID. So you see sports are very competitive here at Smith, like they are at uh, division three schools here in the States in general. Um, I've done uh, a lot of presenting to young women uh, recently in Abbotsford, British Columbia, talking about athletics as an avenue to a liberal arts education. And so if you are a star athlete, uh, I hope you see it's very possible to come play for one of our teams at Smith. Besides Lauren, we also had a Canadian uh, star softball player who is an Ontario ranked athlete uh, for baseball and softball and who likely could have been recruited for a Division I team. But she decided that, uh, that academics were most important to her. Um, and she went on to complete a graduate program in urban studies after leaving Smith. So if you're recruited by one of our coaches, we do give special consideration to recruited athletes during the admission process. So athletics is certainly a big part of student life here at Smith. I wanna speak a little bit 
about our admission and financial aid processes. It's free to apply to Smith. Um, there's no application fee. We use both the common application and the coalition application. And we really do take a holistic approach to evaluating your application. Um, however, as a selective liberal arts institution, by far the most important document in your application is going to be your academic transcript. And when we review that, we're essentially looking to see that you've challenged yourself within the context of the curriculum offered at your school. So I like to say, you know, we're comparing apples with apples and not apples with oranges. What I mean by that is that um, when we're looking at your academic performance, we're going to be looking at you in the context of whatever curriculum it is that your school offers. We're not going to be comparing students and schools that might offer AP courses or the International Baccalaureate um, program, diploma program, um, with applicants, you know, at schools that don't offer those kinds of things. So we'll be receiving your school's profile. We'll be, um, you know, looking to see that where you've had choice, you've chosen to take on, take on some of the more challenging courses, which is really more important to us than to see that you've got a perfect grade point average because you've only taken the classes uh, that come most easily to you. Um, so I think many of you, most of you will be familiar with what's required when you apply through the common application or the co coalition application, the items that you see there. Um, Smith now um, is test optional for most applicants and probably for most everyone who's joining us today. We don't require the SAT or the ACT of any applicant from anywhere in the world. The only time we do have a testing, a standardized test requirement is where you've been instructed in a school where the language of instruction isn't English. And in that case, we'll require an English proficiency test. Um, and that could be either the TOEFL, the IELTS, the Pearson Test of English, or the Duolingo English Test, the DET, which um, you can take from anywhere as long as you have a computer um, and an internet connection. Uh, so those are our testing requirements. Um, we recommend, strongly recommend that you interview with us. If you're able to get an interview slot, it's not recommended, but we strong, I mean, it's not required. It's strongly recommended, mainly because it's more for you than it is for us. It's a chance for you to tell us something that we might not see in your application or uh, to explain in any further detail anything that we might see in your application. Uh, and we have three application rounds. We have two rounds of early decision, which remember is the binding agreement where you're saying Smith is my top choice and I am committing to, if Smith admits me, um, enrolling at the institution and withdrawing um, the rest of my um, college applications. We have two rounds of early decision. The first deadline, as you see, is November 15th. Our second early decision uh, deadline is January 1st, and our regular decision deadline is January 15th. Um, in early decision, you could expect to hear back from the college within a month of the application deadline, uh, whereas in regular decision, we mail our uh, admission decisions uh, towards the end of March. Uh, I'm privileged to work at an institution that does have as generous financial aid as Smith does, but uh, it's not unlimited. So we are what you call need conscious or need aware in the admission process. We will be aware of your family's financial need when we're reviewing your application. Um, and we are an institution that meets 100% of your family's demonstrated financial need. So that means that you apply for financial aid when you apply for admission, and then when you're admitted, you receive your financial aid award along with your offer of admission. Um, and if you are receiving need-based financial aid, your financial aid award will be comprised of scholarships and grants mostly that don't have to be repaid for any student who's receiving need-based financial aid at Smith. Um, there will be a small self-help component in terms of a loan for U.S. citizens. Of course, that's a federal loan for non-U.S. citizens. That's the college's own money. But we cap that at $19,500 um, over all four years. Uh, there's a generous repayment plan. Um, you have about 10 years to repay the loan. There's a grace period um, after you graduate. And then if you happen to go on to graduate school, your loan is, um, you also have a grace period then. 
Um, it's a small interest rate. So we find that the, that the vast majority of Smith graduates find the loan uh, very manageable, very easy to repay once they leave Smith. And then uh, one component of your fi uh, need-based financial aid package um, would be a student employment or work study option where you're working for eight to 12 hours on campus, really just to earn some pocket money so that you can afford to go out and have pizza or go to the movies with your friends uh, or to cover some of the incidental expenses that you might have. And over two thirds of our students receive uh, some form of financial aid. We have very limited merit aid at Smith that uh, goes to, that means it's not based on your financial circumstances. We consider every student who, pl who applies for the limited merit aid we award. Um, again, it goes to about the top 5% of all applicants and largely that merit aid comes in the form of a two year research grant where you know that you're going to be paired with a Smith faculty member who you're going to be doing research with and receiving a stipend for that research for two years, even though that merit award will be good for all four years at Smith, the research obligation is only for the first two years. So in closing, you know, I, we like to think at Smith that we offer the best of a lot of different worlds. We're a small liberal arts college, um, a small residential liberal arts college. You've got the smaller community that our housing system provides. You've got the larger community within the five college consortium. If you need a big city fix, we're just under two hours from Boston, about three hours from New York City. And I will end um, with our promise to you. And our, our promise to you is that if you choose to come to Smith, you're going to leave with both the personal and the intellectual capacities to lead in the world. So I wanna thank you for joining me today. Um, you see my email address. I invite you to be in touch and ask any questions on any topic I didn't cover. Um, uh, be in touch with me with any questions you have about the application process or about life in, at Smith in general. Um, and, you know, uh, again, uh, most of all, uh, hope that you stay healthy, stay safe, stay well, and we absolutely can't wait for the happy time when we can welcome you onto the Smith campus in person.